Hey there Doc, thanks again for subscribing and let's get down to today's episode where we will be covering the anaesthetic techniques for the mandible. So we're going to break it down into three sections here. We have the infiltration as the first point that we're going to cover. Well, then we'll go into the inferior alveolar nerve block, which I've named the Ian. It's easier for me to remember. Uh, the lingual nerve block, and then of course the buccal. Now these two can work very well together. So when you do the inferior alveolar nerve block, we'll go into how that ties in quite nicely with the ling. <clears throat> now once all three of them are done, you'll be able to get the uh, unilateral side or one side of your uh, lower jaw uh, nicely numbed for the patient. Then we'll be going over some extras. So these are things that we need to know more on an academic level. The Galgate technique and the Vazirani technique. But we will just be covering that pretty quickly. It might be just so we have a bit more of an understanding in case it pops up in an exam. Just before we get started, always remember to aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. So that's something that I've written here to highlight. And let's get into the infiltration of the lowers. So as we discussed in the uppers, there is a y-axis and an x-axis that helps us determine where the point of insertion for any injection should be. I'm going to quickly draw my ice cream style teeth. So there's a lower tooth and the y-axis splitting the long axis of the tooth itself, the x-axis on the buckle, or the, uh, sorry, the x-axis on the muco buckle fold here, and then X marks the spot as to where the insertion point for the needle should be. For uh, us to make this easier, let's call that the buccal mucoperiosteum. And then for the uh, palatal mucoperiosteum, which we learned in the first video for uh, anesthetic techniques, we would use that for the uppers because there is a palate in the upper, in the upper jaw region. There isn't a palate in the lower jaw region, there is a tongue. So we call this the lingual side of things, or the lingual mucoperiosteum. So it's no longer the palatal mucoperiosteum and buccal mucoperiosteum. Buccal remains because the cheek is still there. But now it is the, mu uh, the lingual mucoperiosteum that we're dealing with in the lower side. Now on the inside, again, the ice cream tooth is back. Y-axis splits the tooth down the middle. The X-axis is here we go again the floor of the mouth is the target area you want to be looking at however you're going to have if we were to imagine the tongue sitting here on the inside we are going to have that in the way the tongue moves around quite a lot of patients just generally any, anyway so the best thing for us to do is grab a hand mirror or a dental mirror sorry place it here and retract that way but moving the tongue out of the way providing access to the point of insertion, and we should be good to that. As with always, the buccal mucoperiosteum, we're going to be using 1.5 milliliters of solution, leaving us with 3 milliliters of solution for that lingual mucoperiosteum. So those are the solution amounts that we need to use for both sides of the lower teeth in the infiltration. Now I'll move on to the nerve blocks. So we have the first one, the inferior, alveolar, Nerve block, we can call that, as I said, Ian makes life easier. If you look at the left hand side of the uh, screen, you can see here it, it whatever's in yellow is covered by this particular nerve block. There's quite a lot. There's the pulp and investing structures from the molars all the way through to the anterior teeth. And uh, the buccal side of things here, the molar region, as you can see, is left out. That's something that we will need to anaesthetize while we're in this region, especially if we're doing something more surgical. Uh, extractions, for example, gum flaps, anything along those lines. Now, the lingual side of things, it's great to couple this technique, the inferior alveolar nerve block technique, with a lingual nerve block. And I'll discuss how we get to that quite quickly from the landmarks we use for the inferior alveolar. As you can see in this diagram here, we've got uh, point one and three. Point number one, which I've highlighted here, and I will just underline it. You can see it again on the screen. The lingula is the target region of where the inferior alveolar nerve is around that we want to be getting our anesthetic solution into. And point number three is one that helps me quite a lot, which is the coronoid notch. Now the way to do this to make life very easy is to get the patient to open their mouth you'll have a free hand, so one without the syringe. You want to be using that to go into the depth of the vestibule. So if you're looking at the left 
side of the patient's mouth, we use near the patient. The left hand inferior alveolar nerves we're trying to get to, we'll use the left thumb or finger to dip into that vestibule, retract back, work our way to the external oblique ridge, which is a bony landmark, work our way up to the coronoid notch. It's very helpful to have the patient open their mouth fully when doing this. That will then allow us to feel all the bones all the way through. Up the ramus, you'll feel the coronoid notch, and that is essentially now your y-axis. So the y-axis for that EM technique is going to be that coronoid notch. Okay. Now the x-axis we want to come across to is the pterygomandibular raphe. Pterygoman. Whoop. Dibular. Raph or Raffi depends how you pronounce it. If we go back onto that left hand side, you can see here the pterygomandibular raphe is where this uh, split line is, this split black line. And this is the union of two bodies of muscle. So there'll be a distinct line or border in between it. Uh, some patients, it's harder to see on them. They carry a lot of cheek fat, for example, it can be a bit harder. But stretching from where that thumb point is on that coronoid notch region, when the mouth is fully extended, you can pull away, extend a bit, and uh, if you retract the cheek somewhat, you might be able to see it a bit more clearer. That being your x-axis, y-axis where your thumb was, you'll follow that across. That'll be the region that you want to be targeting. So if we get the uh, needle and put it across here, then it's roughly where we need to be. Now some key things about how to get the needle across. We need to do it from the opposite side. If I'm working on the left, the needle will need to start, or well, the syringe needs to start from the premolar and canine area and across to the landmarks that we've just discussed. We're going to be using a long needle due to the depth and also the positioning of where the uh, point of insertion is to ensure that we can get there without running out. Now, what's typically told academically, we want the needle to touch the bone that we're, that we're reaching for. And I'll find a little diagram of uh, where it needs to actually get to on the bone, which is here. We need to be touching this bony area here when the needle is two thirds of the way in. If it's going all the way in and it still hasn't touched any bone, that means that we've come in too straight come back out, go back in at 45. And if it touches the bone too early, meaning that there's not much syringe in, we've hit the bone, we need to come back out and rotate again 45 degrees because we're coming too sharp. So um, those are just things to, to bear in mind. So long needle, two thirds of the way in. We then need to aspirate as always. And then we're looking at 1.5 mils of solution make sure that we are anesthetizing the target area and getting the desired result. Now what's really really good about this uh, technique is that it sits very very close to the lingual nerve. Now the lingual nerve, we'll go to the next point here sorry on my screen, the lingual block. The lingual nerve sits anteriorly and lingually or medially to the um, inferior alveolar nerve, which is great because all it means as we're retracting that syringe out, that needle out, we're naturally moving into that position anyway, because we are going uh, into the mouth almost, so medially, lingually, and we are going forward, which is anteriorly. So it's perfect positioning to just go out by about five millimeters. So out by five millimeters from that E in point, okay? And then we're going to use the rest of the carpool in and around that after aspiration, of course. Then aspirate plus 0.3 mils of the solution, which is remaining in that cartridge. That will then uh, work on the lingual side of the teeth there and give you a nice result, which is what we saw in that earlier diagram in, uh, in yellow. So I'll just find that again for you, this one here. So you're going to work on that lingual side of things and the pulp and investing structures of all of those teeth, which is perfect. We've also got this buckle numbness going on for us, which is really helpful. So the only thing really outstanding now 
is that buckle mucoperiosteal region there which you can go into right now so for this we're going to use the long buckle nerve lock so for this we're looking to get this last section here so we've got a nice numbness throughout that lower half of the um, of the jaw technique for this again is a long needle not so much due to the depth of the tissue but more so the depth of the point we need to get to so it's quite far back uh it's all the way posterior to uh, or distal to the uh lower third molar or the whatever the the lower last molar is in your patient and buckle to that point as well so i'll find a diagram of that in a minute um now from a uh, sort of bony version of where we need to get to if you can see here we are posterior or distal to that last tooth and we are buckle to that last tooth we're looking to hit it around there and on a patient this is what it should look like again posterior and buckle or distal and buckle to that final molar there in the patient's mouth you want to be on the same plane as the occlusal plane of those lower teeth and what this means is that the needle should be going in um, at the same height and the same flat plane as the chewing surface of the teeth so it shouldn't be angled up or down or sideways just into that uh, area that we're looking at distal and buckle and then straight as the plane of the teeth we'll inject into that our 0.3 mils and we should be good as gold to get the result that we're looking for now remember usually as we mentioned with infiltration anything labially it's easy to remember that 1.5 mils is how we how much we should be injecting into the patient this is probably the only exception on the buckle side of things where it's not going three so just bear that in mind now moving on to the extra techniques we've got what is known as the galgates technique uh, and it covers the following so if you can see here there is a lot that it covers here so it does a massive amount of work in a single um, injection which is great there are some downsides to it, for example, it takes slightly longer for that numbness to take effect. And also there's a steep learning curve in understanding how to properly administer this uh, type of nerve knot. So as a landmark, what we do need to know is that it sits a lot higher on the condylate neck. That's something that's highlighted here in green. And then we've also got where the uh, Ian point or the inferior alveolar the nerve knot is, it's a lot lower as you can see. So it's just a bit more practical and easier for dentists to usually get their heads around especially students uh, in our third year why would we use it maybe we are working on more mandibular teeth uh, than one uh, maybe there's going to be a few different techniques being used within the mouth at this time uh, and one of the major reasons is we couldn't land the inferior alveolar and the nerve block correctly so we need to basically switch to this uh, as a bit of a fail safe as a backup to make sure we do it do we do it right so again, we're coming in from that opposite side. It's the long needle once again, and uh, we're looking to get to that height, that condylar neck region. It's quite high up. And as you can see here, the patient is supine. They're going towards that last upper molar right here in this diagram. And uh, they're looking to get towards that bone, that condylar neck region to inject that site. I'm not going to spend too much longer on that moving over now to the uh, vazirani technique so the vazirani technique is used for patients that may have a locked jaw so there's a few different terms for this um, trismus for example is pain on opening the jaw uh, this can be caused by trauma for example inferior alveolar nerve blocks can cause trauma as well so that's something to bear in mind and the trauma is usually on the muscles around the jaws that open and close the mouth itself if a patient is struggling to open their mouth this is great for getting into the uh, region that we need to numb the teeth that we're going to be working on without having the patient opening their mouth with much extent. Downside to it, there aren't really any landmarks to work with because the patient's mouth is closed and it's just visibly a lot harder to, to do. The region that we're going to be looking at uh, getting to here is shown over here. We've got the landmarks, the mucogingival junction of the maxillary third or second molars, this point here, and the maxillary tuberosity, which is on the uh, skeleton diagram here, is quite high up around this region. Okay, sits behind the final molars, slightly higher up, bony structure, 
And then we've got the coronoid notch and the mandibular ramus, which we should be familiar with when it comes to the inferior alveolar of the nerve block discussed earlier. So we will need to be addressing this from the same side as the tooth or the region we are going to anesthetize, not from the opposite. But when we're going in, we're not trying to work on that buckle end of things, but more the lingual side of things. So even though we're going up quite high, you'll see in a diagram here, this one's a perfect one. Patient supine, we're going in and through, through, through to that lingual side of things, not the buckle. We're not trying to get ourselves across to the outside here, but more so inside here. Okay, as you can see in this diagram over here, the, the needle ends up on the inside, not the outside. Okay, so this one's good, this one's bad. We just want to make sure that this is something that if we had to do, this is where it's going. Same side, occlusal plane once again. We're looking at that tuberosity region quite high up. Uh, alongside the coronoid notch, we're going lingual, and we're ensuring that we are getting that penetration into the right area, buckle side of the. Once this is all done, both techniques just mentioned earlier should be 1.5 to 1.8 mils, okay? And uh, once this is done, you should be getting the desired result. It's not an easy technique, so we're not going to be doing it as students, but again, it can come up in the exam. It's great to know this information. One other small point is the mental nerve. So the mental nerve is the terminal branch of the inferior alveolar nerve coming out of the mental foramen. We won't be discussing it, but it's just good to know that that kind of anesthetizes the lower five through to the central incisor. Uh, but again, the three main nerve blocks we discussed today, Ian, the buccal and the lingual. Then we've got the two extras that we should just know on an academic basis. Uh, where the point of insertions are, what the landmarks are, planes, occlusal planes, etc., which we've discussed, what type of needles. In both cases, it was the long needle again. And then the infiltration, what the axes are, should be covering everything there for the mandible. And remember, just aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. You're going to be retracting cheeks. We're using mirrors for that as, as much as possible. When you've got the inferior alveolar nerve block and you need a target reference point that's going to be your thumb or your finger, that should be covering everything at this third year dental student level and hopefully you've picked up something today if you have any comments leave them in the comment section below it'd be great to get your feedback and i'll be looking forward to seeing you on the next one we'll be covering the armamentarium of a dentist so thanks very much once again for tuning in see you again soon bye bye